Hello and welcome to the year-round planning video. In this video we will focus on a variety of information about planning for your annual fruit and vegetable production system. The first topic we will cover is scheduling. Scheduling can be very important when you're planning out how you will run your annual fruit and vegetable system. Some people schedule on a week-by-week -week basis, other people schedule month by month, and some people schedule an entire annual season as an overview. We will begin by examining week by week scheduling. One thing you can do is use something like your handbook or another resource to do week by week scheduling. This is often starting at eight to six weeks before the last frost. However, you can start earlier or later when scheduling out week by week. There are a variety of advantages to doing a week by week scheduling. Some of those include using these week to week scheduled lists with your crews and to remind yourself of what you need to do each upcoming week. Another advantage is having intricate details for seeding and transplanting times. And lastly, they are easily changed or modified due to weekly temperatures or weather fluctuations. Some other advantages are that you can refer to these as a log for your previous year and see about what time of that month on a week to week schedule you were starting to seed a certain variety of something. Therefore, these can be referred back to as records of what happened the previous year. This type of close record keeping differs, however, from the month by month scheduling, which has its advantages and disadvantages. Month by month scheduling is set up on a more rough timeline of monthly projected dates for harvest and maturity dates set up thoroughly throughout what we understand about our crops. Therefore, you can have a month by month idea of what you will start seeding and when they're projected to be transplanted or harvested. Now, one of the most important things by month in month by month is setting up that last date of possible seed or transplant. And this is the more specific detail here. One of the main advantages to month by month scheduling is that you can see as an overview of what you should be seeding and transplanting, but the details are not so specified that you can't modify your plan. To take our scheduling a step further back, we can look at an overview of the growing seasons. We can break up these seasons into four separate growing seasons and look at a large overview of successional planting, crop rotation plans, and projections of produce numbers. This type of planning gives us a very strong idea of what will come out of the season. It gives us rough numbers and a large projection which can help us with ordering seeds, planning out our bed spacing, and figuring out our avenues for marketing. Next we'll talk about long-term scheduling and what record keeping and crop rotation needs to be done when you're looking at a long-term plan. Although many of your goals, projections, and even market avenues may change throughout your annual fruit and vegetable production seasons, it's always good to have some sort of long-term scheduling in mind and possibly have one of your master plans set up with crop rotations, in mind and some strong record keeping skills. Now as I previously mentioned record keeping can be important for keeping a log for the following year to determine what successes you had, what sort of trials and tribulations you may have had, but it's also important because it tells you what you may need to account for in the following year. We will now move into the second portion of the video which will serve as guidelines for how you can schedule your production, for how you can determine your crop yields, and also how you can create some working schedules. So please consider this ideas for 
your specific system and understand that every different annual fruit and vegetable system is going to be a little bit different. So one of the most important things when you are scheduling for production is looking at your crop yields and determining your crop yields. The second thing is understanding successional planting and harvesting intervals and trying to work those into your system as much as possible. So when determining crop yields, there are three things to consider. If you would like to look at it as crop specific, which means looking into what particular crops you want to grow and making your yields based on what you know about those crops. The second thing is do you want to focus more on space specifics? Maybe you only have a certain amount of space and you are going to try to determine what could be the most biointensive way of growing in that space. And third is management capability. How much labor do you have and how much management can you put into your system? Now for some people, all three of these things are equally important, whereas to some, one is going to be higher priority than the other. So please think though about those things when you are setting up your system. We will discuss some strategies for all three of these different ways to determine your crop yields in our next class. Once you've gone through and determined your crop yields, another essential part of the planning process is going through some working activities. These are four working activities that we will go through in our class. One of them is to fill out a weekly planner based on whatever specifics and characteristics of your system that it demands. The second is to go through week by week scheduling options and determine if that is the best way to schedule for whatever you are doing. The third thing is to go through month by month scheduling methods and look at that option as well. And lastly, we will go through how to determine your crop yields on whatever basis you see is the highest priority. For some people, you will look at week by week scheduling, month by month scheduling, and an overview of the year and want to do a combination of all three of those things. The final component to our planning is setting up our maintenance and understanding how much maintenance might need to go into your system. This here is a simple example of a list of things that would be on a week by week schedule. This list of things would typically be in an early spring week by week schedule. So some of those things on your list would be if the soil is workable to start prepping beds and soil being workable means that you can get a tool into it and turn it over. Another thing would be adding decomposed compost or manure from the previous season to your beds, weeding, removing old crop debris, and tilling in any cover crops. And lastly, some fertilization of our indoor containers. These examples will help to give you an idea what we will delve into further when we talk about scheduling this week.